Welcome summoners! It's time for another Champion First Impressions. My name is Colby Cheese and today I'm playing some Fiora. Now when I first picked up Fiora, I tried her out as the jungle. I thought that would be, you know, something that would be good for her. And uh, my first impressions right off the bat were, man, this champion sucks. And so, that's not necessarily the case. I, uh, I can definitely tell you that she's a hit or miss champion. In other words, if you get ahead, you're going to be doing great. But if you don't get that quick lead, then you're not going to be as strong as you need to be. And because of this, I really do suggest you don't play her as a jungler. Uh, I do suggest you play her as a top lane. And let me explain why. Well, first of all, she's a great 1v1 champion. Well, versus most heroes anyways. Not really versus stuns or bursty casters. She does need items and she needs levels to do... Uh, to do well, to really do the damage that she's got to do, and she's a great pusher. She can push down towers extremely fast. So Fiora can actually jungle quite easy, and her ganks are okay. They're a little bit less effective than a jungle fizz, but generally junglers get much less farm, and they have um, you know it's it's better to have a team with a with a strong ganking jungler or counter jungler, and that's usually important. So. Fiora, I feel, just doesn't feel that role, so I would say play her top lane, or in some very rare cases, you can play her mid versus like a Fizz, or not a Fizz, but a, uh, a Ziggs, or someone squishy like that. So, she's a great against a lot of melee champions, such as Olaf and Gangplank, she can beat those quite easily. She won't do well versus people such as Mordekaiser, or Nautilus, Volleybear, Xin Zhao, uh, someone who's just, you know, straight up stronger at, uh, at 1v1. Some lanes are going to be close or, or more even, such as a good Warwick or a good Pantheon. And, uh, you know, those are pretty much the ones I've played so far. But I imagine that uh, it's just going to come down to you playing correctly and getting the correct support from your jungler to get ahead in the early game. Really what you want to do is last it out until you get level 6 because that's when you're going to be doing your big amounts of burst and you can do a lot of things with your ultimate. If you can get past early game without falling behind and you pick up your wriggles first, that's going to give you the best advantage. In fact, the cool thing about Fiora is that she gets this great move speed bonus from her burst of speed. So I actually suggest going straight for your wriggles before your boots. Uh, you may or may not agree with this, but it's worked out great for me. Of course, you do need to make sure you have good ward coverage so you don't get ganked since you don't have those boots. But generally, it has worked out. I haven't had too much trouble uh, doing this in over 10 games of playing on her. So um, with Fiora in the lane, trading on her is, is fairly simple. It just consists of you lunging forward into a burst of speed and then use your repost if they're going to retaliate and attack you back. And then a final lunge and then run out when you have the max stacks of burst of speed to give you that escape and the high regeneration uh, for you know a period of time. Generally, you don't want to stay in past your burst of speed, which is that three seconds, because you're not going to be doing as much DPS, and it's much more likely that you're going to take more damage in return. So keep that in mind when you're trading in the lane. Once you hit level six, though, it's very easy to bait people into fights with you if you get low HP and you can finish them off with your blade waltz. Her cooldowns are actually extremely high, so it's very important that you keep that in mind and you actually play accordingly. So don't just use your blade waltz randomly to, to do some harass or something like that. You definitely need to make sure you can each, uh, you can actually get a kill shot with it, uh, as it's also somewhat of a defensive ability. You don't have to use it just for running in and uh, getting towers or uh, getting kills and things like that. If you get dove at the tower, it's actually an amazing ability to keep yourself alive and force the enemy to take several tower hits in exchange, and you can potentially get a kill for that um, rather than them, so. As far as what you level up, you're gonna be leveling up your burst to beat first, and then your repost second. There's not really much to say about it. Um, the main combo that you're gonna be using in fights is a lunge into a blade waltz ultimate, and then, you know, turn on your actual burst of speed, and then into another lunge quickly before the four seconds is up, and just sit there and auto attack, right click until people die. It's really simple. Uh, obviously using repost anytime it's ready to go when people are auto attacking you. Uh, but the main use of that is obviously the 35 extra attack damage passive that you're going to get from that. And that's quite useful. Another good use of blade waltz is if you're trying to escape from a couple of people, use your burst of speed first and then use your blade waltz on them and then run away. Because what it does is it actually uh, will stack up all stacks of your uh, burst of speed giving you that max run run movement and that can help you get away in some situations also. As far as item build is concerned, I've mentioned that I prefer to get wriggles first. 
I'll generally take a Merc Treads if there's going to be a lot of stuns or ability power on the enemy team. Otherwise, I'll pick up the Defense Boots and the Ninja Tabby. And then I'll go for a Black Cleaver. The reason I go for Black Cleaver first is whenever you use your Blade Waltz, it does apply on hit effects. So you'll get all f the full amount of stacks of the... Um, of the armor penetration onto your foes and then you're just going to be running in with your burst of speed auto attacking people down so I feel like it's actually very useful and also with my runes I don't really get any uh, armor pin on my runes I'll go for straight up attack damage and then armor and magic resist per level for my runes masteries uh, I do the 21 and then uh, 8 1 build so that way I get you know a little bit of tanky stuff with extra armor and magic resist and some HP and then just a lot of extra damage Whatever you build after your Black Cleaver, it's kind of up to you, but usually in almost all of my games, I have built into a Bloodthirster, and then I go for my defensive item after the Bloodthirster. So uh, depending on what the enemy team has, I'll either get a Guardian Angel, or if they have uh, a lot of you know stuns that I need to cleanse out of, I'll go ahead and grab myself a Sash, so that way I can get out of that. So um, that's pretty much what you're going to see in most games. You're not going to have a lot of them go past that actual Bloodthirster point, but uh, if you do, then it's really up to you at that point. And like I said, it depends on the enemy team and what you guys actually need. Playstyle for Fiora is quite important, as you're not really going to get ahead and do the things that you need to do unless you play her like she's designed. And I feel like uh, well, in my opinion, she's one of those champions that can sit there in the lane and push and push and push forever, and that's going to help you actually get really far ahead, and that's what you want to do. You want to get very high level and then be able to run in into the back and uh, pick people off. So what I'll do is I'll pick up several wards in addition to what I've already got with my Riggles, and I'll place those down in the top lane river and uh, in ganked locations so that I can easily push down the tower continually and uh, they're going to take several people to come stop me and then I have those wards so I'll know when people are coming and I can just back off easily. Uh, if they try and fight and, or go for dragon or anything of that sort then I'll be able to quickly take down that tower with a burst of speed as any time alone with the tower you're going to chunk down the HP of a tower. Burst of speed is so great for that. Team fights are definitely about positioning and focusing the right champions. In this clip here, I'm actually going to get caught trying to steal their uh, race. So in order to delay and help my team out, I'm going to use my ultimate to kind of get out of there. I flash over the wall, helping myself get the escape. And then now I'm low HP. I'm going to attack a few champions to get my regeneration up while the team goes in. I'm actually not going to engage right now. I'm waiting for my lunge to get off of cooldown. And then I'll be able to jump back into this team fight and make something happen. So you notice I've got Gragas here behind me and we're going to be able to make something happen so I jump onto the gangplank quickly since he's in the back and I'm able to take him down very fast with an ignite as well as just a lot of auto attacks run back into the bush to get the creeps off of me and now that the misfortune is out of position he's able to get sniped down by our Gragas so this is going to be an easy fight here I know that I can get bursted down still so I'm just going to try and dodge once she uses her ball I go ahead for the kill take it her out and that's going to be pretty much an ace right there after Gragas finishes off the last enemy and that all came from me somewhat getting caught at the wraith area so it's all about like I said positioning in team fights and waiting for the moment to strike so other than that it's just keeping in mind her combo which is the lunge blades waltz into another lunge and uh, ignite if necessary to finish them off if you can play well past the laning phase and not get behind you're gonna be doing great on her otherwise You'll fall behind and she's just not going to be uh, that useful to you. Overall, I think she's a decent champion. She's not OP in my mind. I feel like she's going to do great to, uh, in some games where she gets ahead and starts to snowball. Since she is that assassin type champion, just like in a colleague, for example, who can do the same thing. You know, once you get a couple of kills, you're able to dash in there, pick people off because you're ahead, and bam, it's going to be like, oh man, she's so strong, she's OP. But then there's going to be those games where you don't get any kills, and, and maybe you die once or twice in the, in the top lane, and you get behind, you're not able to buy your items, and then you're just going to be completely useless. So uh, so I feel, in my opinion, she's, she's balanced quite well. She actually does have sustain. So she's kind of like a Master Yi that can actually go AD and do well in the laning phase. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button to show me your support and share it with your friends. I'll see you guys around for the next video. This is Colby Cheese. Peace out.